idea what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Everybody had a good time? Yay! I'm, I'm gonna play and talk. I'm gonna walk and chew gum. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to, to hear the show tonight. No show. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. The tough thing about doing these things after two two nights, I pretty much sung it all out. But you have a capo too, friend.
Anyway, that's what I used to do. That was um, a guy named Donovan. Donovan was uh, England's answer at a time to Bob Dylan. And um, after he did folky stuff, he did um, Mellow Yellow, um, a lot of psychedelic kind of folky stuff. Um, 12 strings are twice as hard to keep in tune, you might have noticed. I guess that kind of led into stuff like... If never I met you I never have seen you cry If not for the first Say goodbye. Never I had you. My feelings would never show. This time I start walking, but there's so much you never know. I keep telling you, hard luck, woman. You ain't no hard luck, woman. Red, set us on the daughter, the child of the water, to pride to be your queen. And wipe the tears from your eyes I don't want to hurt you Girl, you know I could never lie I keep telling you Hard luck, woman You ain't a hard luck, woman You'll be a hard luck, woman Baby, till you find your man Sarah's only daughter, a child of the water, too proud to be the queen. Red, I really love you, I can't forget about you. You'll be a hard luck woman, baby, till you're A hard work woman, baby, till you find your man. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I'm drunk so long, I'm gonna leave her. I've got cool guitars coming, I've got these these signature 12 strings. That one. That'll be really cool. I'm gonna have them on next tour, so I can share them with you, you can play them.
not my job to tune these things. I'm not very good at it. song pretty much same time very similar and um, it was called so long and I'll play it for you no I'm never played for anybody Oh, Jesus, I'm running down 
your feet Oh, tears are coming down your face Nobody's heard. Second Second. Homie, touch me. Ain't quite right. I think we need to tune this. Definitely. Come up and play and sing, and I'll go sit down. <laughs> Maybe you want to. You can tune this with the capo on it. Anybody want to ask me anything? Not all at once. <laughs> what? Question: uh, Are you ever going to do Bam the Opera again? I wish I had time. I really do. You know, when I did Phantom, and it was just an amazing, amazing experience. It was really... Um, I never worked so hard or loved working more, you know, to do eight shows a week and know that your ass is on the line every time you step up on stage and how many people want to see you fail. So um, it was great, but it was also at a different point. I had one child and uh, Evan got time to come up and be with me. When, when you've got three little ones, it's, uh, you know, my wife has her hands full and basically when I'm home every day, I take somebody to school, pick them up from school and, you know, there's a, a full day. So it's really hard to, to find the time where I, I could say, I'll go away, you know. You know, the, the idea of doing Broadway was always something great, but there's only, so many hours in the day and anything that I spend time doing takes me away from something else. So, you know, family's really the most important thing and, and if I can't make it work with my family then there's just no point in doing it. Yeah, it was awesome doing it. Um, it was really, you know, I, I found out a lot about myself that I didn't even know. And, um, you know, the, obviously the, that character isn't, isn't me. But to, to do something where there's a character with, you know, a, a, a deformity that he covers up and um, searches and goes after something but doesn't know how to get it. Well, gee, that was me, you know, I, I, I didn't even know it. And uh, it was very, you know, it was an interesting time for me because I, I started getting involved with uh, kids with facial differences and getting involved with uh, helping other people and realizing, you know, that the more we keep secrets, the more, the more unhealthy we are. You know, the, the, the best thing to do in life is let go of your secrets because uh, they'll harm you more than the truth. You know, letting people know the reality of things is much, much better and more, more helpful to each one of us than, than hiding. So it was great. It was awesome to do. It was really a good time. Um, well, I'm, I'd have to say, you know, Jimmy Page just encompasses everything for me, just as a, an arranger, a producer, somebody who, who is so much more than you, you even realize. I mean, he's a phenomenal guitar player, but what he's made, those Zeppelin albums are, are symphonic, and, and what goes into making that kind of music. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was I was afraid you weren't going to like it. <laughs> Prince was awesome. Um, I first saw Prince in 1979, 78, 79 at a club in New York. And the tiny, tiny little guy, tiny little guy, um, vegetarian, wouldn't uh, wouldn't wear leather. You know, um, interesting, interesting, brilliant. 
Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. How do you stay sane How do I stay what? Sane. How do I stay sane? <laughs> Is that what you asked? <laughs> Thank you. I was going to go, what? <laughs> you know, when you're up here and you can't hear anything, you put your mic. <laughs> um, how do I stay sane? Um, look, every night when you go home, you got to face yourself. If you don't like who you see, then you're in in a lot of trouble. So, um, best way to stay sane is, is you know to know who you are. You know, and, and you know, fame is really interesting because I always tell people that fame allows you to be the asshole you are. You know, or not. You know, fame gives you the freedom to be who you really are. And uh, if we're if we're fortunate enough to be famous, I, I think the best thing we can do is, is give back to other people. Those kind of songs come out of um, suffering. Those, and that's good stuff. You know, I, I don't I don't um, regret any anything I've done. Um, you know, all those things bring you to where you are in your life, and I, I don't I don't believe that anybody um, makes mistakes. You know, what you do in your life is what gets you to where you ultimately are, and you know. I've stepped in some shit, but <laughs> my shoes are clean now. <laughs> Can you tell us more about your second book? Um, second book is kind of, I don't want to say it's a continuation of the first book. Um, the first book was really kind of like connecting. I, I wanted people to know that, look, we all have problems. Everybody looks at famous people and go, gee, I want to be like them. And it makes you feel like less. And, you know, when you look at somebody else and think that they're better than you, it makes you feel that you're less than them. So the whole thing for me with the book was was to connect with my my family, with my kids, so my kids would ultimately know who I was. And with you, you know, to let people know that life's not always perfect and we all go through struggles. And um, you know, the, the second book is really kind of like a, a how-to from the first book. So. It's about how to get up every day and, you know, love, love the day, chase, chase your dreams, how to get yourself in shape physically, you know, um, that doesn't take rocket science, you know, you don't need a big gym, you don't need weights, you don't need anything. Bricklayers are in great shape, what do they lift? Bricks. So, you know, you, getting in shape is easy and its own reward is being in shape makes you feel good and eating you know I, I I like cooking nobody taught me how to cook so but um, so there's, there's recipes and there's great photos of me kind of working out and uh, you know woo! <laughs> and, uh, and no no that's go that's that's gone for quite a while a lot of those guitars are gone but um, so the book is uh, in the works, and it's it's very cool. It's uh, you know kind of like a how-to. Yeah. Um, we probably do the the outskirts of Chicago, do a rock and roots outside of the the city itself. So the cool thing about rock and roots is that they're indoor outdoor, and to do that you need a lot of a lot of real estate and real estate's expensive so we tend to go to a lot of places you know where we can get indoor outdoor space because yeah because the great thing with rock and bruise go cubs the great thing with rock and bruise is it's really indoor outdoor you can bring your kids you can bring your pets food's awesome so it's cool it's a good place to go i like it um solo um, I'm answering a question here. I'm really excited. Um, um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, when I do a solo album, and I'm sure I will, it'll be much closer to my first album. You know, I mean, I, I'd like to lift you in. There's more about 
let's let me push myself to my you know to my limits in terms of um, direction. So I, I tried to get away from what I'd done on the first album, and quite honestly, there's enough Kiss albums that sound like my first album for good reason. So, um, so it, I wanted to do something different. But the next album I would do would just be guitars and doing that. And in the meantime, I think we'll go in the studio and do another Kiss album. Uh, yeah, next Kiss album wouldn't be like son. the last two. Um, you know, we've we, we really covered that ground as far as I'm concerned, and, and um, I have no desire to do a concept album, I have no desire <laughs> to do an album and go, who is that? But, that being said, I want to do something sonically and, and instrument-wise that isn't quite like what we've done before. Uh, you know, there, there have been some great bands out there who've done albums just doing something similar to what they did on other ones, but using different instruments, and, and uh, that's really where I want to go. I mean, at this point, we have nothing to prove, and I, I want to do something that excites us. So that's that's kind of the plan right now. Yeah. Yes, Soul Station. Um, Soul Station, we have four shows in LA at the beginning of February, and uh, we're actually doing a show in the Caymans in January. Um, you know, it's, it's so great. Soul Station's amazing. I mean, 13 great musicians, three horn players, and everybody in that band either plays with Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, uh, they were with Natalie Cole, Whitney Houston, uh, Pink, Christine Aguilera, so uh, John Mayer. It's really a who's who, and these people are amazing. So when we do these Motown, all we do is Motown and Philly Soul, and, and that stuff is really some of the backbone of what I do. People are sometimes surprised, but my roots are very much in, in R&B and in Motown. I saw, when I was a kid, I saw Otis Redding. I saw um, John Lee Hooker. I saw Solomon Burke. I saw a lot of great, great uh, temptations. So um, I love having a band where I can get up and we can really do justice to those songs because Quite honestly, the, the people who play them now can't. So to be able to knock those things out of the park and not play the guitar. Matter of fact, Raphael, who's uh, in Magnetico, Raphael's in Soul Station and Eric's in Soul Station. Um, it's a just a killer, killer band. And um, the problem with 13 pieces is it costs a lot of money to keep the band moving. I mean, these are people who have expenses, and as much as they want to do it, there's a practical aspect. So um, there's a TV show in the works which would help um, offset expenses and make it possible for us to go out and play more. It's awesome to go out and play. Just just killer. Will you ever perform with Evan? Do you ever perform with Evan? Um, I had a curiosity. It would be so amazing. Evan's so good, and I respect what he's doing. So, I, you know, the idea of imposing my playing on him, and honestly, he's much more diversified in terms of his playing ability than I am. So when we play together in the house, I wind up saying to him, look, I can only do, I can do what I can do, and, you know. Um, but, um, I love seeing him and helping, and he's, he's great because he's so receptive to my criticisms and my advice, and he just wants to learn, so he's, he's a sponge, and he, he's great on stage. I mean, he's, he's self-assured, and he's got great personality, and he's funny. Um, it's terrific, it's terrific to see him. Plus, he's, he's just the most awesome guy I know. He's, he's my idol. <laughs> Another Kiss Symphony? I don't, I don't know. There was talk about us doing a Kiss Symphony um, tour and do major cities, but again, oh, wow. yeah. When you saw the bills, that's what I said. Oh wow. <laughs> um, so you know, we, we thought about it, but it, it's 
again, to do something on that scale is really almost unrealistic, but you never know. I, I never thought we would have done the first one. I have a question. Do you have any pets? Yes. That was my question, Judy. Well, we have a dog. A dog named Snowball. Why? Because the dog's white. And, um, um, it's a lab, a Labrador. And uh, the kids, you know, it's their dog. You know, I just feed it. <laughs> it's always great how kids want animals and they never take care of them. That dog would be dead. It's like, oh, please, I, I'll feed it. And I'll, as soon as it's in the house, it's like, Crazy, crazy. I don't know if I can play them. Give me a second. Just read. <laughs> Oh, you're still here. <laughs> I'm sorry? I have an awesome time. I look forward to this every year. I mean, really. I have to say, it's the first year we did it. I was really skeptical. And I was kind of like, really? You know, well, first of all, I hated the idea of being on a ship. You know, um, a friend of mine, was a Commodore in the, uh, of an atomic submarine. And he wanted to take me on a dive. And I said, I would only go in that thing if the hatch was open and it would, the rope was tied up to it. You know, I'm scared of all that shit, but uh, this, is, this is just fabulous. And it really has a, a, a feel of kind of family. You know, Absolutely. people get to meet each other, people, people, uh, People get married, and their husbands and wives are really pissed. <laughs> um, I'll try this. You're going to have to help me. Trust me. Goodbyes go on forever 
And with all that we may say Till tomorrow comes We'll dream of yesterday started to like lighten it a little. I looked like a wrestler. I mean, it's just the weirdest look. So um, I gave up on that. But I, the blonde patch, I kind of dug that. Um, oh my God. How does that go? I only wrote it. I, you know, it's a long time ago. Um, let's see. Let's see. What do we do? Tomorrow. Okay, I'll play it tomorrow, but I. Boy, that would be difficult on a 12 string. Um, yeah, that's that's like around the fireplace with the one you love and you play the bang bang you. <laughs> Hey, honey, come over here. I have something I want to play for you. Let's snuggle up. Boy, these are temperament. Yes. That's me. Oh, Molly. Oh, my gosh. That was... Uh... Boy, 
There's a song on Wicked Lester, Molly. My my friend came then We an hour of forgiving My my friend joined And I'm happy just giving You know, I, I swear to you, I haven't played that song. I'm going to date myself, but I haven't played that song in probably 45 years. <laughs> and that's why I can't play it. I'll try to learn it for next year.
Who sent the ship through the storm and the sea? Last year, I'll see if I still remember it. Um, I know it's very funny. <laughs> said, Paul, come here, I want to show you something. And 
she had the logo tattooed on her ass. And I was, all I could think was, some guy's gonna be really pissed at you. you know. But it's amazing. It's, it's, um, it's really humbling. And uh, to have that kind of impact on people to want to do something like that is, uh, is a tremendous sense of um, obligation for me to live up to anybody who would do something like that and, and commit themselves and their lives. I, I got to make sure that I don't disappoint you or any. Well, God bless you. And, uh, and you, you. Whatever I've done for you, you, you have to realize you've done the same thing for me. You know, I, um, when you know, people say, oh, you know, you, you changed my life and you gave me all these things, I go, you did the same for me. You know, I wouldn't be where I am without you, so it's, uh, I say thank you, and every time I get on stage, I do my best to, to thank you that way. So, no, thank you. I hope not. <laughs> you might see them like Cher show in Vegas or something. But those costumes were, they were like, they were a wrong turn. You know, sometimes you're on the, the freeway and you get off at the wrong exit. That was the wrong exit. You know, um, you know we, we, uh, we survived a lot of crazy things that, that we did. And um, it's just weird to look at some of that stuff and go, what were we thinking? You know, I mean, people like it, but it wasn't, it wasn't true to the essence of what the band started as, what, why we got involved and why we committed ourselves to doing something that people thought was crazy. I mean, in the beginning, people thought the band was just insanity, that it wouldn't last. So, you know, to go from that to be kind of becoming like Vegas Disney creatures, you know, it was... Uh, yeah, but it, you know, I'm here, so it's uh, it's all part of that trip. You know, it's, uh, you know, we made this long road and we, you know, got off at some wrong places, but we're home. We made it. 40th anniversary, mm -hmm. love Yes, and correct. Um, don't know. Um, I don't think I. I mean, that's great, but. The theme for for the next cruise is, is bigger than that. It's it's. Um, wow. I can't. I'd have to kill you if I told you. Um, but it, it's it's much bigger, and it's um, sure it's a celebration. But you know we have decades to celebrate. We we have so much that we've accomplished, and and uh, we want to keep this fresh and. Uh, Keep it, keep it fun for everybody. We want to make sure, you know, when you get home, if you want to get some of the, the merch from this uh, from this cruise that you couldn't get because it's sold out, we're going to make uh, a system so that you can order some of that. And then the next cruise, we're going to make sure that ahead of time, you can pre-order. Nobody wants to be in those lines. Nobody wants to wait. And especially, nobody wants to be in those lines and then get up to the front and find out what you wanted isn't there anymore. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen next year. Yeah. What are the uh, non-kiss songs that you enjoy playing uh, best? The non-kiss songs? Yes, the, the ones that you love playing. That I love to play? Yes. Where? At home. At home? Yeah. You mean listen to or, or play? play. Or, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, because you said you like you, you like Led Zeppelin, so I'm I love wondering, yeah. Both wondering songs are great. if you like to play. Or yeah, you know, playing um, Ramble On, play um, um, Thank You from the second album, or whole lot of love or there's so much music. I mean that stuff is brilliant. You know, the, that music is just ridiculous. You know? I mean the, the third album is is I mean, they're all just brilliant. Any new bands you like? One one more guys, one more question because we have to we have so many people here that we gotta do the signing and meet Paul. So funny thing. Yeah. Well 
I've been accused of being an overgrown teenager. You know, coming Me too. I am an overgrown teenager. <laughs> what are we going to do when you guys say, eh, we, we still got to be done? What are we going to do? What am I going to do when you don't show up? <laughs> I think we're in this for the long haul. I think I think we're doing I think we're doing good. Let's go sign and meet these people. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. It was, you know, the, the fun is to get up here and not know what you're going to do, and, and uh, I enjoyed this. So I hope you did too.